what is up everybody welcome back to the back pocket today we are continuing our bust or boom series with the chicago bears for me one of the most interesting teams throughout the nfl offseason a team that really changed the overlook of their franchise overnight by drafting caleb williams and obviously made a few other really big additions that we're excited to go in the video <laughs> I think let's just start with the big move. So the Chicago Bears with the first pick in the NFL draft did take Caleb Williams. No surprise there. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone knew it was going to happen for months and they got rid of their old quarterback, Justin Fields, to do so. So my initial question for you guys are: is what are your initial um, ex expectations for Caleb Williams? Well, I expect him to step in to that starting spot and immediately be a top 10 quarterback. That is the hype that has been built around him. That's what I expect out of him coming out of USC. He has been one of the best college quarterbacks in recent time, won a Heisman. He is capable of doing practically everything. And with the team they have surrounding him, he should be able to step in and have a CJ Stroud level of impact. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is what he should do if he is going to prove himself as their messiah. Um, He's not that player, though. He's not. If anyone, I know, I know we took a long break in videos, but if anyone watched a few months ago, you know my opinion on Caleb Williams. This is a quarterback who I think is a very high chance of busting in the NFL. Um, just, I don't like Caleb Williams. And it's not exactly a, like a, there's no necessarily, and this is going to sound, you know, super malinformed and whatever, but there's no total justification to my logic just based on what I've watched. I don't think he fits well. Um, I think he's going to come into the NFL and like drastically, um, drastically like just not even come close to his expectations. He's expected to come in and be a top 10 quarterback. He's going to come in and be a bottom 10 quarterback. So I don't think that there can be that much. I, I think it's unfair, a little bit unfair to him. There can't be that kind of expectation cast onto him, especially, I mean, come on, it's the Bears. They haven't won in so long. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to be in the middle of that. Um, I do, I, I agree with Charlie that the expectations, I think, are a bit, I think, a bit too high for him, just because I think he is someone that, um, I think he was definitely worth the first overall pick for me. He was clearly the best quarterback in the class. And when you when you're the best quarterback in the class, more often than not, you're going first overall these days. Um, I think he is someone that is relatively pro ready, but I wouldn't say he is to the level of a CJ Stroud. Um, or even I would uh even to the level of like a, a Joe Burrow, like that kind of rookie quarterback that will have an immediate impact. I don't know if he is at that level. It's possible. I don't think he is right now. But obviously, the talent is undeniable. I mean, someone that really, again, people, some people did compare him to Patrick Mahomes. And I think if there is one thing that you can definitely compare him very well to Mahomes in, not saying he is Mahomes, but what, what reminds you of the most of Mahomes to him is the um, artistry, the ability to escape out of the pocket, the ability to kind of um, just... Not he's not. I mean, he's fast, but he's not. I don't think he'll go in as the fastest quarterback in the league. But it's more the way to manipulate the pocket and get out of the pocket and make plays outside the pocket. And I think he is one of the best um, quarterbacks coming out um, into the NFL in recent memory at doing that kind of thing. First year, I'm not. I know he's got a lot of weapons. We'll get into that. But he's got a. It's a new system in Chicago. Um, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be. Um. It's going to be a learning curve. That's what I will say. I think it's going to be a learning curve for him. I expect him to be probably somewhere in between, um, I would say, 15 and 20, his rookie year in terms of all quarterbacks um, starting, obviously not accounting for injuries. But I think he'll be I think he'll be fine. He'll be fine for rookie quarterback, and then you can expect him to take leaps year two and then year three. So the reason I have this feels This feels really, really naive to me. How can you take someone who played a couple of seasons of college football and compare any of his attributes to the best quarterback? Well, in the league? That's what it's that's not. Correct. No, but that's but I think you always have to. I mean, like there, I think you could make the case that um, Jamarcus Russell had one of the strongest arms in the NFL. That doesn't mean Different. anything different. No, no, because we're comparing traits. We're comparing his ability to, as a scrambler. 
He's a great right. scrambler. If Doesn't you were mean saying that Jamarcus Russell had as good of an arm as Aaron Rodgers, I would have said, no, that's not fair. He has a good arm. That's a fair thing to say. I'm not saying a good arm. I'm saying a strong arm. I'm saying a strong Caleb Williams arm. has good improvisational abilities, but to even say that he could possibly touch Mahomes... Give it, give an example that works then, because Mahomes is the prototype. It's not the end, the end result of Caleb. Yeah, Williams. exactly. No, no one's saying, no one's saying he's going to be Patrick Mahomes. We're saying he has traits that remind you of Mahomes, and that's the reason why he gets t- taken first overall. Because at, at the end of the day, there aren't many quarterbacks that will remind you of Patrick Mahomes in like in that category. Caleb Williams is someone that. Not isn't Patrick Holmes, but he has traits that are similar to him, which obviously is what the NFL would covet. But it's but it's such a dialed down version. It's like how we don't compare people to Tom Brady. I mean, other than Dylan, top people have know, compared logical like people Tom Brady. don't. But logical. but it's something that you You're don't do because it's bust. so. I don't I don't see the. I think he's much more likely this year to step in and be top ten than he is to have a bad season. Honestly, I, I, I just, with the weapons, I get that. I think, and. Look, we'll get into the weapons later, but based on purely, like, just purely on Caleb Williams, I don't see a winner as much as I've seen in oh, okay. Are we really going recent in this times. Direction? We're really come going on, in this man. direction. Come on, come on. Like, they, either he had one of the it. worst defenses in the NFL, and, and not NFL, in college football. They had an okay offensive line. This, did- this is a trend amongst quarterbacks that is not, I'm not going to call it like 100 accurate because it's not but quarterbacks who win in college win in the nfl a lot of the time jalen hurts was a second round pick this is a guy who did not lose in college and he does not lose much in the nfl joe Patrick burrow Holmes, won a national Mahomes had a losing but, season with texas tech college? and he's one of the greatest quarterbacks I ever di- look i didn't brock say it was 100 percent brock purdy I didn't, didn't win college. i didn't say it was 100 percent. it's just a trend and i don't, I don't even like, but I don't. But I don't think the trend. I don't think it correlates with even some of the best quarterbacks. Josh Allen didn't win a lot. But you're talking about guys who played at like mid-major schools now. I USC mean, isn't. He wasn't that much to look at. They weren't that other good, than, other than Caleb Williams. Yeah, he was take. He would put them on their back. That team was Caleb Williams. The two seasons that he was there. They had like okay. They had Jordan Addison one year, and then the last but year they Caleb had Williams had Brandon bad Rice. performances. Are and like, am I wrong? So, yeah, so, so does every. I mean, that's gonna happen with almost any player you ever evaluate. At the end of the day, he still was one of the best. I mean, Patrick Mahomes had bad performances. Tom Brady had bad performances. But the way that you look any at quarterback it is, is gonna have bad place, performances, even in but college. I don't place all of USC's wins in Caleb Williams' hands, and I don't place all that, of their losses no. in Caleb Williams' hands. I think I think he had very much more. He had to do. He had a lot to do with every win they had because and at the end of the day, the defense wasn't yeah, stopping he had a lot anything. To do with it. He's their quarterback. This was a USC team that was putting up forty plus a game. Like you don't see that. Gary yeah, Schrader that's... put up forty plus points in Syracuse. <laughs> Not a game. Not a no. Game. In in the first four games of the season, he did. Okay, the against, first four against, games. That's against who? Come on. I don't even remember. Come that's what. No. That, Caleb Williams was playing against Washington, and Oregon. I don't. I understand. I understand not liking Caleb Williams, not thinking Caleb Williams will have a great start to his NFL career, but saying, but just lying and saying he wasn't good, and that not that he wasn't good I didn't in college, say he but wasn't even good in college. but even downplaying his importance to USC is just crazy. I'm not because, downplaying his importance at all. I just do you, don't think he so was other as than good the as gut people feel, say. Other, but other than the gut feeling, I think he's not a winner. I don't think he has it. What is the trait that you see that is like, oh, I don't like that? Like, what? What? Where is your look for me? And, and now neg- at this point, it's been months since I've watched Caleb Williams play because the college season has been over. But this is a guy who I think does not have the um, overall pocket presence. I know he's a that's great. Blast. No, 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 no. That's one of his best ears. traits. That is his- he is the best pocket presence quarterback that's come out of a draft since. Improv- like, listen I don't to me. know. No, listen to me. When he's outside of the pocket, he's one of the best. But for me, when he's sitting inside the pocket, he's is also where I get concerned. Great about. instruction. That's just not true. What that's I, that's I, what I my see. problem with him is. I think his internal clock is like. I think that's okay. a problem where he's like holding that's onto the ball him too sitting long. Sitting in the pocket. 
no, that's what I'm saying. No, that that's, that's different. everywhere on the that's, field. That's that's different. That's like I, I there, that's different. That's like just holding the ball too long and taking sacks that he doesn't need to take. Dude, or well, sorry, getting, that's letting what, himself that's take. What, that's pressure. what I'm trying to say okay, here. Okay, that's what okay. I meant by pocket presence, like presence in the pocket. His like, timing, like his, his okay, his yes, awareness okay. in the pocket. Okay. Aware, pocket awareness. That's fair. That's yes. fair. I get that. Okay. And I think that is something that could ha- that could that definitely could hurt him. At the I do NFL agree. level, we see that guys also who get sacked playing. a lot in college get sacked a lot in the NFL. No, definitely. And I think, um, I think that's one thing that the Bears' offensive line is going to really have to, um, at least towards the beginning of the year. Obviously, I think he'll get better as the year goes on. He learns not to take as many hits. But in the beginning of the year, that's going to be a lot of that is going to be on the Bears' offensive line. If you want to jump into that, I mean, it was a pretty good offensive line last year. I thought it was. I thought it was decent. I mean, their tackles, Darnell Braxton Wright. Jones and Darnell Wright, I think both had solid. I think Bra- Darnell Wright had a pre- uh, pretty good year. Braxton Jones, a solid left tackle. Not great, but he's not bad either. I'd say he's solid there. Um, they added Ryan Bates in, um, in a trade. Um, he'll be their starting center. Didn't play at center for the Bills. He played at guard, I think. He was kind of their sixth man who was also a solid piece there that um, I think could be, you know, again, nothing special, but just a solid center there. Um, Tevin Jenkins, um, and Tevin Jenkins and Nate Davis will be their guards, which again, I don't think they don't have any like one guy that's like, oh, that's an all pro right there. But it's a I don't think there's like a, a true I don't think there's like a real weak link to that line. So I think you can kind of trust it to be top half. That's what I would say, if they stay healthy. And there's a world where Darnell Wright turns into that all pro left tackle this year. It is possible. It is possible. It's difficult though. Yeah. I think I, I think I don't think he will be, but I, I could see it. But I think it's tough to imagine. But let's but, focus a little bit on the the run game before we really get into the rest of the offense because this was a team that had a good running quarterback, which made their rushing attack a lot better. But now with Shane Waldron in as the offensive coordinator. Yeah see a lot more direct ground and pound ball and i don't know that they have the personnel for that they brought in deandre swift to be their starting running back and personally i don't see it there right right i think um someone that we kind of saw got phased out of the offense uh last year that might get go back into the offense a bit more is khalil herbert i think i could see him so uh as someone who fits that scheme a bit more and maybe might get a few more touches i think that also kind of um, I feel like um Ryan Bates, that's where the move I feel like makes sense there. He's kind of that kind of you saw a lot of that ground and pound in Buffalo, I think, towards the second half of the year. So I think um I think the running game, obviously it was the second best um running game, at least in terms of yards per game last year. Obviously, I I wouldn't I mean Caleb Williams, he's a good running quarterback. I would say he has good um uh, he's above average at that going into the league. But compared to Justin What do you say? It's not going to be design runs, though. That's the difference. No, I can see design runs for no, Caleb Williams. I look, look at him in college. He can. No, no, he no, has, but, but college also has more design runs for quarterbacks. No, no, no. I agree. But he's man. still. Also but he's fast. But he's fast enough. He's like he's throwing him in design runs when that's not his game. Yeah, no, it, I don't. He like can know. He can play. It'll, it'll he can happen every every one or two games, but it, it, not. It's, just, it's upping the chance of injury. No, I no. But I think the him breaking off a run because he's not going to break off. No, that's true. He's not. And I think. No, I agree. And I think at the same and I think also at the same time, obviously going from Justin Field to I think arguably just as a purely as a runner might be the best running quarterback in the NFL. I think that is um obviously it's gonna be different. And it's gonna be um I expect the um running game in terms of like just purely yards to regress, but I think still it is a running game that I think will still be good with Caleb Williams, with um I mean, they've got the running backs are fine again. They got Swift, who's fine. Uh, Cleo Herbert's fine as a two. They still have they have Roshan Johnson there too as well. So I mean, I just don't think they have any size. I just think the size is going to be a bit of a problem with the interior line that they have being. Okay. I like Tevin Jenkins there. I like Tevin okay Jenkins. There. He's that. not a tackle, but no, but he's he's. I think he's a, an above average guard. I don't think he's a good. I don't think he's a tackle, but as a but, as a guard, he's a like. He's got that mean streak that you want in an interior offensive lineman. I'm well, fine with him there. Yeah, but I don't know about Ryan Bates. I, I like Nate they, Davis there as well. I just think um, they need to have bigger backs. That's really what I'm going Yeah, they, they don't have a workhorse running back in this like, team. They, Roshan, they, Jenkins, uh, Roshan Johnson could no. end up being that. And they, DeAndre look, Swift was the that last look year. look at it is DeAndre Swift is a guy who's mostly going to be in the game for passing downs. Yeah, um, I think. 
But so he'll would get, He's going to get carries, but I don't see him getting more than 14 or 15 carries a game. So Khalil Swift Herbert, last year. Swift, maybe Swift he could get 12. Yeah, but there's no year. one who could get 20. Last year, Swift redefined his game. He was playing as a ground and pound back in Philadelphia, and he really just was not himself. He was yeah, getting, I, he was getting 20 also in Philadelphia behind an yes. incredible interior offensive line. Mm-hmm. And he put up over 1,000 yards, I believe. He did. He did, um, but he was not himself at all. He wasn't catching the ball. He wasn't running out for uh, – he was never playing out wide, which he did a lot in Detroit. And I think in Chicago, what they're going to want from him – is for him to be the more dynamic back that he was at the first half of his career pre-injuries. But I just don't know if they have the back that can take the load of the carries if they're going to let him be a gadget guy. Look, who would fit great in this running back room is David Montgomery. Um, Unfortunately, they no longer have David Montgomery, um, but they need that compliment because Swift and Herbert and Johnson are too similar and none of whom are big. Like, who gets the goal line touches? It'll be Swift. Swift got in from the goal line. Like, I, I think it'd be Herbert. But really? I, I think was, Herbert's on the side. I'm thinking Roshan Johnson because I thought he got him last year. But um, mm-hmm. either way, conflict means there's no one answer. And a lot of teams have that answer on the goal line. And I just don't think the Bears do. The short yarded situations, do they have the answer? No, Swift is good. Herbert's fine, but no great option there. I think I think I think short yardage ability in the short um short yard ability is more down to the offensive line than it is the running back though. And I think and I think the Bears offensive line is two. more than I mean, good enough a... to be in the I think it's more offensive line though, especially nowadays. I would say I would think I think the Bears offensive line will be fine in that. I think they'll be okay. Um, um in yeah. some cases I agree with you, in some cases I don't. I think if the offensive line is bad, it's hard for a good running back back to be productive in the short game. However, just because an offensive line is good does not mean a bad running back can be productive. No, I agree. But I think all of them, I think in they'll be fine. They're not great, well, but I think they're fine. They're just not going to be a great short yardage team. Yeah, but I don't think they'll be bad enough where it'll have a huge impact on their season. But at this no, point, with, with the games they're going to have to play, they have so many tough games. It's going to be, like, that's the type of stuff that'll matter in the long run. No, no, I, yeah. I do. I see that. I, I see mean, that. little plays here and there are going to make a difference. So well, let's go to their pass catchers, which they have so many of them. There is Man. all three running backs that we mentioned, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, Cole Komet, and whatever other guys that pop up out of nowhere. Don't forget Velas Jones Jr. I'm forgetting. Him. I won't. <laughs> but this team is built. And this is part of the reason that I think Caleb Williams is going to have as good of a season as he is, is because – you you guys are talking about his his internal clock, right? Mm-hmm. What type of internal clock is going to be that much of a detriment when you have guys like DJ Moore and Keenan Allen who are going to separate within a third of a second? These mm-hmm. are some of the best separators in the league, and I know Keenan Allen's old, but that's always been his trait. DJ Moore really showed out last year. Ro- Romo Dunes is a little bit of a different player, but you need that kind of versatility from a wide receiver crew. So, Where would you compare Odunze to a current NFL wide receiver? So... I had trouble doing this during the draft process, but right now, what I would say for Odunze comp, I guess would be a. Uh, ooh, I don't. I don't have one. Serge, maybe Godwin. I. I don't know. Like, nah, he's too big to. He's too. Yeah, he's, he's too. He's, I don't want to say D Hop because he's not that big. I was. Like, yeah. No. Maybe no, like, that is. I maybe mean, like CD Lamb. I like would the- say a maybe a better route running version of of T. I'm maybe, trying to be IU. Nah, but I, like makes sense. Uh, so here's my problem with this receiving core. Mm-hmm. I don't love the the way they put it together. I really, really? do like DJ. I, Moore. I, I really, really do. I think yeah, I, I, re- I really like DJ Moore. My problem with DJ Moore is some days he's great, some days he's non-existent. He was pretty. He I had him on my fantasy team last year. Some days he's great, some days he gets one catch for 13 yards. I think that's also due to the Bears not he having a great passing game, though. But with the but yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Keenan Allen, look, he's looking worse and worse every season. Hmm. And what? And he has last not year he been, was so good. He was. He has. He has not been there for Herbert. 
we looked at the Chargers receiving room, and for the last four years, we've said, oh, my God, it's such a great receiving room. They haven't shown it. Because they've been uh, because they've barely had any games where they've been both healthy the whole. Yeah. Uh, Keenan Allen's injuries are if he gets injured that's oh that's yeah no no that's a problem and for then sure. Odunze my one knock on Odunze and this is a guy who again I struggled a little bit comparing him in, in like into the NFL my one knock on him is I guess more so of a system thing for the Bears but I think he'll be a little too one dimensional this year um mm-hmm. I think it's a guy who can do more than one thing. But I don't think they'll ask him to do more than one thing, which might be a good thing for him, might be a bad thing for him, because it could be good in the sense that, like, he's a rookie and he's still learning. The deep ball every time, it's not a bad way to just sort of get adjusted to the NFL. But I think it could also be a bad thing in the sense that I do think he's a player who can do more. And their focus is going to be DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. And Adunze is sort of going to go under the radar a little much. I do like Cole Komet. I don't love the way these players are necessarily going to mesh. It's the problem. And my mic just fell. But um, I guess my mic doesn't even like my take. I'm just hating on the Bears, if you couldn't tell. I don't know what it <laughs> is. I have this feeling that I just don't like the Bears this nah, season. No, I just um, I disagree. I'll, I'll get there eventually. No, I, dis- I disagree just because I think actually their skill sets complement each other very well. I think DJ Moore, I think all of these guys can get open, which is great. I think all of them can win with route running. But I think specifically what I like about them is that I feel like DJ Moore is your – is your um, yak guy, your guy who can get the ball in space and he's going to be able to get um, a good amount of yards after the catch. Keenan Allen, he's your security blanket. He's someone where you can throw the ball to him and you think if it's on target, he's going to catch the ball. Romo Dunze, he's probably that contested catch guy, that guy that really I think both these guys are great at, but they um great at a lot of things. Contested catch, I don't think it's really either of your specialty. Romo Dunze was one of the best at contested catches in college football last year. I think that is a translatable skill to the NFL. And I think he'll be, he'll feast off of those. Like I said, I do actually agree with Charlie that they could ask him to be a bit more one dimensional where he is that kind of that 50, 50 kind of guy in a way, but he also can win in different ways. Obviously, if you expect him to win routes down the field, he will be able to do that. He can go. um, He's efficient on those slant routes as well as he, as he was for Washington. So I think, I think with these three guys, they all are, I think, well-rounded, but they all each have their own thing that I think um, allows them to stand out, I think will be make them crucial players for um, Chicago. And I think um, it makes them arguably, in my opinion, the best wide receiver tandem in the entire NFL. I mean, it is, I understand. I understand you'll say Miami, Dylan. I mean, but... I mean, this is like three guys, and I think in the nowadays in the NFL, you're seeing a lot. Um, you're seeing a lot of three receiver sets. There's no there. Event, one of these guys is going to be single covered, and I feel like no matter what, um, I know Dunze is a rookie, but just in spite of that, I think if they if it's one on one, you like that matchup if you're Caleb Williams. So for that reason, I think it's the best receiver group in the NFL. I, I say also. I'm I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about this, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this is mm-hmm. just a thought that popped up. This isn't something I prepared. But these groups, these receiving groups that we like, I feel like there are a couple every year that like, oh my God, they're so stacked. We had Chase and Higgins and Boyd, and I think they underperformed. We had AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard. The first half of the season, Devonta Smith wasn't an eagle, and the second half of the season, AJ Brown wasn't an eagle, um, just because they didn't do anything. Um, I think the one that we've seen in recent years that does succeed is Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Um, but I wouldn't even find, like, I wouldn't put that in the same category of stacked receiving course because it's only two players. So I don't know how often receiving cores that we say, oh my God, they're stacked. They have three or four guys that are just top 10 in their position. I feel like a lot of the time they don't work out. And the Chargers is one that we've been looking at recently with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams that just doesn't pan out all the time. But that's just, I, time, I, I, I don't doesn't. like that. I just don't like that narrative because I think they were actually, with when Justin Herbert had both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the field, they were actually one of the better receiver uh, receiver duos in the entire NFL. It was more so that they just couldn't stay on the field. And I think that is a, I think with Keenan, I think that is a valid concern. But I think that was Keenan, that was those two in particular. But I'm looking at these other ones too, and I'm just saying I don't see – I think these guys are, in a sense, too competitive with their touches. 
and it doesn't always uh, pan out the way you want. I mean, uh, T. Higgins has demanded a trade because he's not the number one receiver on the team. No, it's more so because he's not getting the money that he wants. That's the reason. Because they can't pay him because he's not the number one receiver. No, no, no. I, I, mean, I know, but I think Keenan is going to be gone after this year. I think that is pretty much a given. And then you have you take and then you move on with DJ and Rome, which I think is fine. I think with one year, but, but I'm only talking. We're only talking about this year. No, no, I no, I agree. But I think this. I mean, I don't think there's any concern about Keenan wanting out because he's going to be out at the end of the year anyways. So that's where I. But it's not. But it's not about wanting out. It's just about how these guys can all perform. And I think we just find that in most cases, when you have two like a certain amount of superstars, they can't all perform, and that's just what I happens. Mean, I get, I get that, but at the same time, they're not, they're number, they're like, they're raw numbers, like they're like volume numbers may take a hit, but I think a bit, but I think that's not really the the scary thing about this group. I think the scary thing is that it's going to be, they're all going to be what some of the most efficient receivers in the NFL, where one of these guys, if one of these guys is in single coverage, you're going to throw the ball to them no matter what, and if they are in single coverage you'll take your chances like nine times out of 10 with like throwing it to DJ Moore to a Keenan Allen. I would even say a room with Dunze considering how sure. translatable a rece- wide receiver is to the NFL right now. Translatable is for sure for a separator. We are way too quick to gun Romo Dunze as an elite receiver though. He hasn't, t- yeah. he hasn't taken I say, a- I'd say he's, he he's one of the best wide receiver threes in the NFL right now. No, for what we've he hasn't expected. played a snap. For what we'd expect, yes, but to to sit here and say that we they said it about Quentin Johnson, well, it's a well, it's a prediction. Well, it's a prediction video. Oh, okay, comparing Romo Dunze to Quentin Johnson, like they they were not in the same strap. Quentin Johnson wouldn't be a first round pick in this year's class. No, but, agreed. But he was last year, and people touted him to be the best wide receiver three in the NFL. No, no, people did not say about Quentin best. Johnson. Yeah, because people were so excited. <laughs> yeah, pe- some people, not not all people though. I wouldn't have said that about well, Quinn yeah, and Johnson. Not all people would... are so excited about Romo Dunze. It's not like that. No, I mean, but I am. I said this is a prediction video. I predict that based on what we should, what we expect from the wide receiver position, even from the gun, I think he'll be one of the best, if not the best, wide receiver three in the NFL. Sure, sure. To say wide receiver three is a fair take, but we're we're kind of sitting here, and the way that you guys have been discussing, I've kind of just been listening and nodding my head, but. It's the discussion is can a team with three wide receiver ones work? And I don't like Keenan Allen and DJ Moore are undoubtedly right wide receiver ones, right? I mean, Keenan Allen know, actually had a more efficient season as a wide receiver two, though, when he was Keenan Allen was never a wide receiver two, not a wide receiver two, but like more as like kind of as he had a co star with Mike. He Williams. was a Z, he was a Z, but it was like it, it's just he was a wide receiver one, he got the majority of the targets, and he has been a wide receiver one his whole career. We're just slipping Romo Dunze into this conversation as if he's taken a snap yet and can be a wide receiver one from the day one. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. But especially in the way that Shane Waldron's called his offense in Seattle, he has spread out the ball well enough. Mm. But this is still going to be a lot of running game. So it's it's not like it's not like all three of these guys are going to be able to touch the ball fifth like five seven times a game. No, I agree with that. I do agree with that. It's not like the air raid. Like it's not like they got Cliff Kingsbury there. So I agree with that. I do. Well, let's go. I, over mean, the, I think that's part of the problem, though. Let's go over to the defensive side of the ball because I have only good things to say about that offense. Uh, I, the run game is going to be the run game. It won't be as good as last year, but this is where I think this team starts to fall a little bit. And I know people might disagree. Chicago's defense stepped up at the end of last year. I personally am not a fan of Mike Aberflus. I think it was a mistake to keep him on board. I think they should have gotten rid of him midseason last year. And while they did conform and make themselves into a formidable opponent by the end of the year. I just don't think he is the guy to lead this defense when the offense already has a shaky-ish offensive coordinator. Well, I mean, I think I I agree with you that I do have a problem with defense. I don't think it's because of the coaching staff because I didn't even think because the Bears towards the second half of the season after the Montez Sweat trade, which I think is a good timeline to go after because that's when that defense really changed. Yeah, they were, I would say, they were like in the top ten, right? We would say that it, just in that range, yeah. In that range, yeah. And when you look at that personnel, I think it's a good back seven. I like I like TJ Edwards, Tremaine Ed, um, Edmonds, and Jack Sanborn. I like that linebacker room. I obviously like Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson, and Kyler Gordon were solid towards the back half of the year, and then um, and then Jaquan Brisker, obviously. So it's a solid unit. But then you look at the D line after Montwe- Mont- Montez Sweat. There wasn't really a lot there. And I actually think the coaching staff got more 
out of it than was really there because other than sweat what was what were the pieces to really actually be excited about justin jones who was Javon dexter i mean it, it it's not really a group that inspires a lot for me that that I'd say that front four and then the guys that are behind them. And I think this year I'm not really that excited about it either. I mean, after sweat, it's Andrew. I mean, I'm just looking at the depth chart on our lads, but it says Andrew Billings is the nose tackle. Jervon Dexter is the defensive tackle. I mean, okay. Uh, Jervon Dexter is fine, but like, he's not great. And then Demarcus Walker is the other edge rusher. But at the back end of the season, they had two signature games where they went defensively, at least. The two signature games on defense were their win against Detroit, where they only led up 13, and then they lost to Cleveland in a very close game, but that was a good defensive game. Other than that, their defensive performances that were so impressive were against Carolina, against Josh Dobbs in Minnesota, against Arizona, and against Desmond Ritter in Atlanta. Those were their defensive games that everyone was like, oh, this defense is starting to pull themselves together. So I don't know. I don't know if I can sit here and fully just say that the defense completely turned around because of coaching. I think it was a little bit of both. I think like they got better. Sure, Montez Sweat made a huge impact. Mm -hmm. But I I still am just not convinced. No, no, I agree. I would say this is a mid, this is a middling defense going into 2024. I mean, yeah, I think, I I mean, yeah, you're good. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure because I, I'm a really big fan of the secondary. I, no, I think I Jalen agree. Johnson. Jalen Johnson is one of the premier corners in the NFL right now. Um, they're bringing in Kevin Byard, who for the last seven or eight years has been one of the best safeties in the last NFL. Year, we'll last year we'll see where this goes because he wasn't fantastic last year. But we'll see. He has the talent. He. he we. We will see what we get from Kevin Byard this year. Wasn't fantastic is a bit of a. It's an overshoot. He was dreadful last year. Yeah, I mean, was he, I mean, I didn't watch a lot of Kevin Byard tape, but no, I I agree with that. I think also partly, I will say partly, the Eagles coaching staff, the yeah. coordinators weren't the greatest. I mean, no, I mean the Eagles. The, I think the Eagles as a team like really underperformed compared to how um that defensive personnel. So I think. I think going. I don't think he because I think when he was in Tennessee, he was good towards the earlier part of the season. So I would say, I think maybe he did get a little bit worse, but I still think he's an above average safety, and I think he will help um, the Chicago back end. So right. I mean, especially he's alongside um, Jaquan Brisker now. And yeah, yeah. Reed Blankenship or whoever else was up at. Safety I mean, Reed Blankenship was wasn't was actually pretty solid last year, but. But I I know what you mean. Jaquan Brisker is better. I, I mean, then you look at Tyreek Stevenson or Kyler Gordon, and I really like Tyreek Stevenson. Didn't yeah, watch a lot of him, but I only heard good things about Stevenson as the year went on. Um, so I like their secondary. I'm not as optimistic about the linebacking core as you were. I think I'm not the biggest Tremaine Edmonds fan. I think he's That's a good fair. solid linebacker, but not your I think like, Jack Sam Mike linebacker that you can always depend on. Um, and then I do like TJ Edwards, but again, not some fantastic linebacker. He's just that role playing linebacker. Who's good. Mm -hmm. Um, Jack Sanborn as well. And then it just gets even worse as you get to that defensive line, which we don't like, you know, you guys already harped on the defensive line. Um, other than Montez sweat, it truly is dreadful. It's other than Montez sweat, probably the worst group of like probably one of the worst position groups in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I mean the moves that they made on there, like again, like they need. I feel like they needed to make more moves there. Um, we take- saw they signed Jacob Martin, um, from the Colts, who like he was on the Jets for a year and he was fine as a role player, I guess, but he's not gonna make a huge impact there, in my opinion, at least. Um, they drafted Austin Booker, who has potential, um, but I think I wouldn't count on him to be a huge impact rookie year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wasn't really a huge fan. I mean, I, I was a huge fan of a lot of things that the Bears did, but I think one of the things they could have done better was addressing the defensive line. Um, they lost Justin Jones, who went to um to went to Arizona, who again isn't great, but he's but he he was I think he was um they didn't really replace him. And I think that was so I think overall I'm not I think that um defense line will probably bring them down and make them a pretty middling unit. Cause I do like the back seven, but I, I do like the back seven of the, of the, de- of the defense. Um, I know you're not as huge of a fan as of me than me uh, of the linebackers, Charlie, but I still, I do like that back end, but 
yeah, I think um the front four will make things. Well, a bit here's easier. my problem. I do think. Look, I think the secondary is a well above average, and I think the linebackers sit right right around average for the league, maybe a little bit above average. So when mm. you combine them, it's very very good back seven. The problem yeah. is as good as your back seven is. I mean, you could have Pat Sertan, you could have have pick any corners any safeties any linebackers if you can't generate any pressure no yeah it's a pressure game the nowadays corners are gonna fu- like the corners can't track receivers f- for seven seconds no that's and that's why Montez sweat well, is I really think... gonna have to have another big year compared um Montez i know he had a good he had a good he, he had a good even, year yeah he doesn't even need to amass 15 sacks he just needs to have a really high pressure rate and yeah. very fast because if he can get quick pressure, it's going to force quarterbacks into not great throws, and that's when the secondary and linebackers can capitalize. So mm. I think if they can start generating a little bit of pressure, it doesn't even need to be a lot because it's a good unit in the back. If they can just generate a little bit of pressure, this Bears defense could be set. Not excellent, but set. And I think my problem is, look, that defensive line is not going to generate pressure. You double Montez Sweat, and then you don't worry. Because the other guys just don't. I think they're going to use their linebackers in a blitz in blitz packages a lot. Oh yeah, to. I could. T- I think they. I definitely could see that too. Which like, which could they, work. This is where I think that they, they made a mistake. Definitely could. Draft. And listen, I like Romo Dunze as much as the next guy does. I think mm. they should have traded that pick back and taken a defensive player. I thought. I thought they were going to take Byron no, Murphy. I, I thought I, that. Really, I thought they did not need to do that, and they were set on doing it. They wanted it from the. The day that they saw they had those two picks that it was a receiver and a quarterback. But I think re- like I would have definitely traded back and taken a defensive player or even just sat there and taken Dallas Turner or sat there and taken Byron Murphy. There were lots there lots were so many Yeah, there there were so many good defensive players on the board that would have served them better than Romo Dunze. And oh Dunze could end up being one of the premier wide receivers in the league one day. But this mm-hmm. year, that's just not what they needed. No, yeah, I agree. I, no, I, I think, think I think for the few, I think for the overall outlook, Romo Dunze is the best player to take. But this year, I think having they had already had enough offensive pieces to make that offense really good. I think Romo Dunze makes it better, obviously, but I think a defensive player might have actually had more impact this year. So let's Wait, run I down. Think this is where the Bears. I don't know that I call it a mistake, more a, a bit of hasty like a sort of a hasty decision i don't even think it's a hasty decision i just don't think i just think a lot of people love the romo dunze pick and i love and i love it I, i'm not saying i don't love it i'm just saying they love it but I, they think i just think it doesn't i think for this year it doesn't it doesn't have as much of an impact as a lot of people may think yeah i mean i think they're just trying to solidify the fact that they've now got caleb dunze and dj moore for the next however long and yeah, maybe a mistake for this year, but they're gonna have more chances. Not to a build mistake. Defense. Um, yeah, no. Just a bit of a an interesting spot, and I think they were just excited to get Romo Dunze, and they weren't yeah. excited about any of the defensive prospects necessarily. And that's fair. And I think, I mean, there's a reason why they, they did last till pick 15. At the end of the day, if Caleb does turn out to be a franchise guy, like you said, you've got him, DJ Moore, and Romo Dunze locked up for the next few years. That might be a an entire Super Bowl window if Caleb Williams is the guy. So I think uh, it's not a bad pick at all. Obviously, I'm not. I don't think anyone no, would yeah, say that. I, I but don't. I don't dislike the pick. At I all. just. But I. But I think um going. What we're. What the point of that conversation is is that the defense might be something that holds them back this year. But I think it could hold them back in years to come too because we watched um Aaron Rodgers for years in Green Bay. Yeah. No, that's true. And Very true. They kept adding on the offensive side of the ball, and they kept losing because their defense was terrible. And this Bears defense, if their defensive line performs, um, kind of as expected, they could be a terrible defense this year. They mm-hmm. could be terrible. Yeah. So I think it's it's gonna be. We're gonna have to see what happens. But that being said, you guys want to move on and do some record predictions. Yep. So that's run they've got week one they have tennessee at home that should be a pretty straightforward win for them i like tennessee when what they've done but this chicago offense is eh, tennessee don't sleep on tennessee but i no, i yeah, really I, think about it. I like tennessee defensively and it's a rookie quarterback in chicago but i'm gonna give the bears the win week two at houston sunday night football i think that's houston's game agreed mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then they go to Indianapolis, a bit of a hostile environment. Week three, that could go either way. I would I, say, I would say they lose that. I think Indy, I, I, Indy, I, I really like Indy going. I would also give it to Indy. Agreed. 
Week four, they are home against the Rams. Again, that could go either way. I will give it to them just because I gave Indy there. I'll say I'll, I'll give the Rams. I think the Rams will win. I'm going to go Rams. I'll go I'll go Bears. So I got one win more than you guys here. Then they go home against Carolina. That should be straightforward. Yeah, they'll win that. But I, I think Carolina did have done solid in the offseason too. But yeah, the Bears will win that. Yep. They go to Jacksonville, go second home in England in week six. That should be a very tightly contested game. I will give it to them, though. Yeah, I'll give that to them, too. Um, I'm going to take Jacksonville. So then we go into a bye. I have them as a... I got I have, them at two and four. Three got, and three. I got four and two. Then we go to Washington in week eight. That should be a win. Yeah, I agree. Then to Arizona week nine. That should, that should also be a win. I think they lose that. I think that's. I think that's kind of one. I think it two row games in a row. I think that's a trap game. And I also like what Air, I think Arizona um, will be a lot better than people expect with Kyler Murray. Look, it's going to pivot on Kyler's performances, obviously. So, mm-hmm. so I've yeah, got them all the way up at six and two now. I have, we we both have them at four and four. It looks like. Yep. It's going to be seven and two when they go home against New England. This team should get off to a pretty hot start. Yeah, I think they yeah, win. New England. But this I think is they where they're going to. This is where they're going to run into trouble. They've got Green Bay at home. That's going to be a loss. The Bears do not beat Green Bay. I think they do actually win. They finally get over that. They, they do beat the Bears, uh, Packers. They get another game against Minnesota. I said in the last video I gave it to Minnesota. So Where's I, the game? It's at, it's in Chicago, but I gave it to Minnesota in the last video. I'm so also going to give them a loss here. Battle of rookies. I say the Bears win three straight. I think they um they go 7-4. We're going in the oh, different. Dylan, I don't even remember who I gave that win to. I, I, I remember I had Minnesota sweeping. But then we go to Detroit. In Detroit on Thanksgiving, you're not getting that. Yeah, I agree. Seven five. That brings five, us seven. to eight and four for me. And then San Francisco away in December. Yeah, they'll it's a loss. Eight and five. Low key could win it, but I, I I'll give it San Francisco. Don't even say that. They Monday could. That's in- the one that you go low key could win. I mean, hey, teams change a lot from year to year. I think it is very possible, but I, I agree. San Francisco will win. Monday night football in Minnesota, December 16th, week 15. I'm handing them another loss. I think they sweep yep, Minnesota. I think they go 8-6. Right now I have, I have them at 5-9. and nine. Right now I also have them at 8-6. and six. Detroit in in Chicago, I'm going to lose. The, they're going to lose again. Um, yeah, I lose, they lose that. I agree. So we're eight and seven, and I had them as an eight and two team at one point. So they're on a big yeah. skid here. And then we've got week 17, Thursday night football against Seattle. I'll give them that. Where? I think they, I think they lose. I think oh, Mike McDonald's going to, I think seven. it's going to be a Mike McDonald master. I'll, I'll give the Bears week. the game. Six and I'll, ten. Say, I'll take Seattle. So we're at nine and seven at eight Green Bay. Eight. Sunday, nine and eight. They can't win that one. I, I mean, yeah, six. I have nine. a six win team here. Yeah. Nine, I say, eight. I'll say eight and nine. I've got nine think, and eight. But I think it's a wide, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a decent range for this team. I would say they're it's anywhere. It's a wide range because it's a rookie quarterback. So yeah. it's, no, it's I agree. Just, Caleb, Caleb is the range. So I think they're anywhere from like a five to a 12 win team. Yeah, agreed. I don't think the ceiling is really twelve wins, just because of how. I think so. If is. Caleb, if, if Caleb is like the guy with that group, with that, yeah, just I with guess that off, fair. that offense will be one of the best in the league. So I say, I say five to twelve, and I think okay, five. I would fair. be, I would be surprised if they won five. So I say, I say eight this year. I think it I've could, got them really at could six, go. but that's just it's a tough schedule. No, exactly. I think the tough schedule has a lot to do with it. Also, I mean, they've got. I mean, the entire NFC North is looking really scary this year anyway. Oh God, so, I mean. It's terrifying. Man. I mean. I, I like the Lions so much. I like the no. Packers so, so much. It's no, that's what I'm hard. saying. That's why I think it's like, I felt like I would have predicted them to have a winning record. But just because of that schedule, I say 8-9. Yeah. All right. Oh, God. I, I My light just stopped working. Oh, well. All right. It's a great way to end the video, but again, if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Again, we're finally we're finally being more consistent again. We're all back home, so we're recording a lot more videos. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more. Um, I don't know what what team we're gonna be doing next, but make sure to be ready. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well, and we'll see you in the next video.